It's Thursday afternoon in northern Florida, and I just drove four hours up here to Best Bet Jacksonville. I've been here a few times recently, and today I'm going to be playing on the 510 live stream. I head to the cage, give them $5,000 worth of bills, and collect $5,000 worth of poker playing chips. Head over here to the live stream table, take my seat. I'm ready to play. Let's get started. About a half an hour into the stream, I pick up a premium hand and raise the $35 from early position. Cutoff makes the call, button makes the call, small boy makes the call, and four ways to 10 deuce three two clubs. I bet out $100 and only the cutoff player makes the call. Turn card queen, giving me top set. I continue now for 325 and Charles makes a pretty quick call again. I put him on a flush draw, possibly a 10x hand, go into the river, ace of diamonds. I don't like this card because I feel like it's going to be harder to get paid off by a 10x hand. It's possible he could have ace x of clubs, ace four, ace five. There's $900 left in his stack, $1,000 in the pot. I've got a set. I am all in. Once I go all in, Charles snap calls me. I feel like I'm good here until he shows... 4-5 offsuit for a straight on the river. I know I didn't like that ace on the river, but it was the opposite. It gave Charles a straight, pretty sick hand, top set for me on the turn, straight on the river by Charles. We lose a pretty big one here, around $1,500 down within the first two hands. One of my favorite things about this game up here in Jacksonville is that it's an uncapped buy-in. So as you can see, I'm adding on $3,000 of cash to my stack, ready to play. Obviously, it kind of sucks losing four or five offsuit to my pocket queens, but that means that Charles is here to gamble, and that's what I like to see. We're going to end up playing some big pots with him coming up. So make sure to stay tuned. Brenda calls 10 in this hand. Corey raises the $35 in the small blind. In the big blind with king five suited, I come along with a call. And we go three ways to jack three, four with two diamonds. I've got one over card. King high flush draw and Corey C bets for $50. I could call or raise. And I decide to go at the raising route here on this flop. Thinking that Corey could be C betting a little bit wider. I want to try to take this one down and put pressure on his under pairs of the board. He does make the call, so I feel like he does have something here. Turn card does improve our hand. Now open-ended. Any six, any ace gives us a straight. Diamond gives us a flush. King over card to the jack. I feel like it's a good spot to bet the size of the pot. I threw out four black chips. And when Corey calls again, I feel like he has a hand that's probably not folding. So on the nine river, when I miss every single one of my outs, he checks over to me. I decided to just give up and check back, and it's a good thing I did. Top pair, top kicker for Corey. He was definitely not folding that one, and we lose a couple hundred dollars more in this hand. Okay, this next hand is quite the weird one. I raise it up over a straddle to 75 with King Jack offsuit. Charles, who's playing basically any two cards, makes the call on the button, and we go heads up out of position to Jack, Deuce, 8, 2 hearts. I decided to bet big on this flop over the size of the pot, 200 trying to get value from all the hands he'll call with, and he does call with bottom pair. Turn card six of hearts, now with the flush draw coming in, I now size down my bet, betting 175, trying to keep his range as wide as possible, and it does when Charles snap calls again with bottom pair. Going here to the river, which is the 10 of clubs, I bet over the size of the pot on the flop, bet the turn, it's pretty scary board, straights, two pairs, flush as possible, so I check, and Charles fires out a very quick $300 bet, and the action's back over on me. I think to myself, this is an easy snap call, but then I also think to myself, what hands is Charles betting this river with? It's only $300 into a $900 pot. Is he ever bluffing for this sizing? Charles just bought in for $1,000 just about an hour ago. He's already up to a 5.5k stack. Don't think he's ever bluffing in this situation. We lose to two pairs, flushes, straights. We lose to ace, jack. We only basically beat queen, jack, and jack, nine. I'm trying to play discipline and not pay people off, and I feel like I'm beat. Just don't feel like there's enough hands, and I'm beating this situation, so I fold my top pair and get completely owned by the four-deuce suit at the bottom pair. Great hand by Charles, taking this one against me on the river. You are allowed to use your phone at the table. There's around a 15 to 20 minute delay on this stream. I get a text after this hand and my friend who's watching the stream tells me that I got bluffed with King Jack offsuit and Charles had four deuce suited. So now I think to myself, it is on. My parents are watching this stream. 
I can't let him embarrass me in front of them. It's time to get my revenge against Mr. Charles, and we do find a spot for that. We're playing six-handed in this hand. I raise in the cutoff with 9-10 suited. Charles, who's been limping, calling, not really three-betting, three bets the button to $110. Back over on me, we're over $6,000 deep. He's already schooled me multiple times this session. It's time to get my revenge. I decide to call with 9-10 offsuit, thinking he probably has aces, kings, queens, or ace, king. If I smash a board, I could potentially win a big pot. Lexo heads up, and Lexo getting the best with Charles this time, smashing the flop on Queen 10 10. Smashing the flop, we do. Trips for me. Charles bets out $100 on this flop, given the fact that I think he's got aces, kings, ace, king. Don't think he's ever folding in this situation, so I decided to check raise to 250 out of position, trying to take the lead in this hand. Make the pot bigger. He does call. Turn card, deuce of spades. Pot's around $735. I want to bet a sizing that he can still call with his aces and kings and his ace king, setting up a big bet on the river. So I decided to go with a $350 bet. Looking back, I could probably bet a little bit bigger. Charles does come along with a very quick call here. Final card, three bet pot to the 10 of hearts. That is right. Quads for us, four of a kind in a huge pot. My plan on the turn after betting around half the size of the pot was to follow this up with a huge bet on the river as long as the river wasn't an ace, a king, or a jack. But this does now change things. I have quads, the best hand possible. I put Charles on aces and kings in the situation. What's the best way for me to get all the money in the middle? I don't feel like it's betting and having him just call. I feel like it's checking over to him, allowing him to bet with his over pairs and then to put in a big check raise. So that's what I do. I check over to him, and he fires out $600 here with his pocket kings. This is one of the best feelings in the world. Your opponent bets big on the river. You've got quads. Now I have to decide how much I want to raise. A standard sizing here may be 3x or 3.5x, but given the fact that I feel like Charles is just never folding, I decided to go big $3,200 check raise here on this river. We're on a live stream. He's probably got a full house. Don't think he's ever folding. I actually thought about maybe going all in as well for $5,000, but I thought that maybe somehow he could find a fold if I went all in. So I decided to go with 3,000. He does think about it for a little bit, but puts in the one chip call. We are getting our revenge against Mr. Charles. Quads against Kings. Full house for him. Quads for us, a sick flop and a setup river for us to win a massive almost $8,000 pot. Before this hand, I was down $2,000. And after this hand, I now have a $10,000 stack, profiting over $2,000 on the night. Not to my surprise at all, Charles is a great sport in this hand after getting massively cooler. A lot of people would probably lose their shit, including me, but he takes it like a man, pays off the money, and then also chuckles a little bit as well. I use the terms revenge and kind of sometimes amp up the players back and forth in my vlogs to try to make it more exciting but obviously there is no bad blood here we're just playing poker charles was one of the nicest guys at the table hoping i get to play with him again soon in the future especially if the dealer is going to reward me with massive coolers like this another interesting hand coming up hijack opens to 35 i have ace jack offsuit and call in the cutoff normally i would be three betting this hand but at this table i decided to call brendan now three bets on the button to a small sizing of a hundred dollars charles has two cards so of course he's calling back over here to the hijack who calls can't be folding here i call for a hundred dollars more a little more than four hundred dollars in the middle ace jack and the flop comes out ace high pretty good for me charles checks hijack checks i check and brenda who three bet on the button checks behind turn five of diamonds once brenda checks back on the button on the flop and charles checks again here on the turn i feel like i definitely have the best hand especially when now Corey bets out a small sizing on the turn of only 150 dollars feel like he can definitely have a hand like a7 ace8 ace9 ace or ace10 he can maybe even have a flush draw as well so i decided to raise it up here small Trying to get value from weaker aces, I make it $400. Charles snap calls my $400 bet. Back over here to Corey, who's been playing very snug the entire night. Hasn't really put in any money in the pot unless he's had a pretty good hand. So once he calls, 
I tell myself we're going to slow this one down and check back basically any river and definitely going to be checking back this one, the 10 of diamonds. Ace 10 now beats us, but that's not going to happen when Charles leads out for a $1,000 bet. Back over here to Corey, who, like I said, hasn't gotten out of line, really hasn't been putting money in the pot unless he has a strong hand. He decides to now call $1,000 as well, and the action is back over on me. This has actually now gotten into a pretty close spot. I'm getting such a good price to call, and I feel like what could be happening here is that Charles could be bluffing. We already know he's capable of that. And then maybe Corey is calling with a weaker ace. Maybe Corey has ace 7 ace eight or ace nine I feel like Corey, if he had a set or even two pair would maybe consider raising on the turn or raising here on the river so i don't know it's a close one only had to call a thousand dollars to win almost five thousand dollars not really sure what to do in this situation but ultimately i feel like i must be beat by one of these players so i reluctantly fold my hand and it turns out i was beat by both of them when Corey had a set and Charles had two pair, our ace jack was basically drawing dead on the flop, and I guess we somewhat lost a minimum in this hand. Over the next hour, I don't really win any pots, kind of bleed down my stack to $8,000, so now I'm completely even on this session. In this hand, the hijack Charles calls, the button raises to 80, big blind calls 80, with four or five of clubs, I call 80, and now Charles puts in the limp re-raise to 325 bucks. Button gets out of the way, Big blind gets out of the way. Given the fact that Charles has been given so much action so far today, I decided to call here out of position with a suited connector, trying to smash this flop again, maybe win a big pot, and I do smash it with a straight flush draw. Ace, three, eight with two clubs. I check over to him. He bets out $300 versus some players who maybe would have a fold button. I would consider raising but I feel like Charles just always has a big hand here once he limp re-raises and bets his flop. So I call and the turn improves me to now an open-ended straight and flush draw. I check over to Charles who bets out $500. Now I have a decision. The stack sizes are a little bit awkward. I could semi-bluff raise here on the turn, but like I said on the flop, I feel like he's just always going to have a big hand, ace-queen, ace-king, and aces. He's never going to be folding there. So I feel like the best option is just to call. Plan here is if I make my hand, I'm going to bet out big on the river. Let's see if we can get there. Ten of hearts. Damn, we miss everything. No straight, no flush. I check. He bets. I frustratingly fold my cards face up. It's always tilting when you flop a huge monster and you have a ton of outs and you miss everything. I'm sure you guys know the feeling. The stream is now coming to a close. Somewhat frustrated because I'm up stuck at my peak. I had a $10,000 stack. Now we've kind of bled all the way down to 6.8K. I'm going to have to book the loss on this session. I feel like I ran kind of bad today. I lost with a set of queens when my opponent got there on the river. I had two big straight and flush draws that I completely missed. Got kind of semi-coolered a couple times. Didn't pick up any big hands pre-flop really. Did win a huge pot though with quad tens versus kings. Guess I can't really complain. Sometimes that is how poker goes. This is a swingy game that we all play. After five hours, I end up racking up my chips, heading to the cage and cashing out, losing $584 on the night. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please like, comment, and subscribe. More videos just like this to come. And until next time, I'll see ya.